Hey, welcome D Lab, everybody. On the bench today, we have a Silverface Fender basement amplifier. Comes to the shop from the original owner. He said he's owned it for a little over 40 years. It's been sitting for about 20. He decided to fire it up and play it, and when he did, smoke started pouring out of the back of it. So he shut it down and he drove it up here to the shop for evaluation. So obviously I'm not going to power up the amp until we do a thorough inspection. So let's take a look and see if we can find the cause of the smoke. It is still the original two conductor cord. Still has the old original RCA 6L6's in it. Smells good too. Is it a nice musty smell unless that's a smoke? I don't know. All right. So a lot of guys say they have difficulties getting these uh, nuts off of the chassis retaining screws. But I can usually reach right in there, get them out without much issue. This one up here is a little more difficult, but I can usually feel it all right. All right. Here we go, guys. We're getting close. In search for the smoking component. Nothing under here looks charred. Super original. I see absolutely no signs of maintenance, so I'm guessing what smoked would be the filter caps under here. Let's pop the old cap cover here and see what we got going on. This is my guess. Hopefully it is this because I sure don't want it to be the power transformer although I would have smelled that immediately I don't smell that terrible carbon smell this guy's stuck there we go huh well I don't really see any evidence of smoke under the cap cage. Hmm. Usually these would be all blistered. This one does not look that way. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Alright guys, well, I'm kind of stumped. I expected to see some fried filter caps. So now I'm investigating the power transformer. So there is our primary, about 1.6 ohms. Here is the high voltage secondary. I've got about 20 ohms to that center tap. Another 18 ohms or so to that center tap. So I've removed the power tubes. Okay. Standby is off. I just want to see if we got the DC output from the transformer. I'm sure we do. So I'm on the Variac. You can say I'm bringing the high voltage up. I'm looking at the current on the Variac. It looks fine. All right, let's check the negative bias. Yep, that's there too. Interesting. So absolutely no signs of anything in here that's charred. There's absolutely no smells of anything. So my guess is maybe we have a shorted output tube. It was overloading the power supply. And what he re was really experiencing was heat rather than smoke. Either way, those filter caps will have to be changed out. 
So I'm going to pop these 6L6s on a tube checker real quick, see if one's shorted. Next step is we'll put in some new filter caps, a new negative bias cap. And try to fire it up. Now I think we've uh, narrowed down our problem. One of the output tubes is drawing over 100 milliamps of current. There's this guy only drew about 64 so we got about that output tube obviously there's something going on internally it's probably overloading the power supply of the amp so mystery solved but the question is is what was causing the smoke I still don't see anything but at this point I'm going to put in new filter caps new negative bias cap new output tubes and we'll test Alright, I've changed the main power supply filter capacitors as well as the negative bias cap and these are the old Mallory electrolytics that used to be up here on the eyelet board. Before I put in my new 6L6s though, I'm also going to change these two caps. These are the grid coupling caps that go to the 6L6s. If they're leaking any DC it'll smoke my new tubes. I'm going to change them with this pair of Sprague's rated at 600 volts. All right, the basement is up on my Mojo stand. I'm getting ready to apply power, but the output tubes are not installed yet, and that's because I need to check for the presence of negative bias on the grids of the output tubes. So what I'm gonna do is bring the amp up on a variac, bring it up nice and slow. I'll apply about 50 volts. I just want to know that it's there. Okay, so here, so here we go. This is the grid of one of the 6L6s. You see, I got about negative 21 volts there. Here is the other one, negative 24. Now, the reason that that is imbalanced is because this has the bias balancing system rather than variable bias. So now that my hands are free, I can get in here and adjust that pot so that we have the same negative bias on each tube. See so we're at 22. Bring this guy down. Split the difference. Pretty close. Anyway, this will vary once I put in the tubes. And this pot is dirty. See how it's dropping out? It's a very bad thing. So guess what? That chassis mount pot for bias balance wasn't just intermittent. It had some type of an internal failure that was pulling the negative bias down as far as negative 8 volts okay remember we saw like negative 22 and I could not advance it any further and then all of a sudden it went nutso well guess what it was this pot so I was going to update the amp to variable bias anyway rather than the old balance system so now it has a 10k Allen Bradley pot installed I'm looking at the grid of one tube right now Trying to get my screwdriver into the adjustment slot so I can show you we now have adjustable negative bias. So I am pretty much sure what happened to this poor amp is it lost control of negative bias and smoked those output tubes. Thank God it didn't hurt the power transformer. All right, here we go. One man show. I've got the scope. Hooked up across a dummy load, audio generator injecting a tone into the instrument channel. Let's see if we have any output of the basement. Oh yeah, there she is. Looking nice and clean. Let's check the normal channel over here. Good deal. Yep. She is alive. So I'm pretty sure that what was causing the overheating and maybe the smoke that he saw was the loss 
of negative bias. All right, mission accomplished. It appears as though the problem is resolved with the basement amplifier. So what do we take away from this video? It's a process, guys. When you have an amp come in with unknown issues and you really can't verify what was actually going on when it was in the owner's hands, you need to give it an inspection. You need to go in there and change out those filter caps if they're the old crusty originals. Okay, they've been in there for like 50 years, all right? Make absolutely sure that negative bias is stable. Don't put in new output tubes if you don't see that negative 40 to negative 50 volts on those 6L6s or you're going to bake your new tubes. That's all I'm trying to do here is give you guys some pointers, save you some money, make you better technicians. If you follow this process, you'll be successful.